what are the best and worst pulling accessories to add to a strong weighted pull-up program to facilitate building maximal pulling power. Personally, I see the weighted pull-up as the king of all pulling exercises, and as I've explicitly detailed in recent videos, I've used a step-loading progression system to build up to a roughly 2x body weight pull-up. That's 2x, as in me performing a pull-up with my own body weight added to me in additional weights. By the way, feel free to check out this video on screen right now if you're interested in an extensive program on how I achieved this, or check out this video if you want to learn more about my overall pulling journey to roughly 2x body weight pull-up. But recently, I've gotten a bunch of questions about the best pulling accessories, so that's what we'll answer today. A great success! Each of the pulling accessories will be judged on the following three metrics. Number one is how well the exercise supports weighted pull-ups as the main movement in a complete pulling program. If an exercise does not support weighted pull-ups as the main movement, it goes into F tier. Simple. Bye, bitch! Second metric is how easy it is to perform the exercise correctly, as well as how accessible the necessary equipment is. So here we're looking at ease of execution as well as accessibility. Thirdly, we'll look at how easy it is to progress with an exercise, so how easy it is to add reps or load over time. For an accessory to rank highly, it needs to score well with all of these metrics, or it needs to do exceptionally well with a few. Okay. In this video, I'll be covering nine powerful pulling accessories, taken from the domains of calisthenics, functional training, as well as some gym movements in there as well. All of the exercises will be ranked from S for super to F for failure. Also, at the end, I'll crown one exercise as the best of the best, promoting it to S plus tier, and one exercise as the worst of the worst, downgrading it to F minus tier. And with that, let the rankings begin. If you truly want to skyrocket your progress, click the top link in the description down below and join our brotherhood of passionate athletes that all want to take their strengths to new levels and unlock awesome skills as well. In the community, we have live calls, courses, monthly challenges and more. So join now whilst we still have the chance. Click the top link in the description down below and I'll see you inside. Cheers. All right, guys, let's get straight into ranking these pulling accessories. First and foremost, though, what criteria make an exercise a beneficial accessory in a weighted pull-up program? Well, obviously, I mentioned three metrics in the introduction to this video. But more specifically, where is this part of like, it fits well to support the weighted pull-ups, right? What does that really mean? Well, here are a few things I'm looking at, right? First and foremost, you want to have low systemic fatigue. The exercise should not overly fatigue the body or take away the focus from the weighted pull-ups. Next up, good retraction specificity, because good pulling is all about good retraction, at least in the calisthenics game. Next up, you were looking for good grip or tendon strengthening ability, right? Because good grip and tendon strength, this transfers over really well to more pulling power during your weighted pull-ups. Next up, there's bar specificity. So exercises performed on a bar are more optimal than exercises not performed on a bar. There are a few other things as well as we'll touch upon as we go through the rankings, but those are some of the main things I'm looking at. So first and foremost, let's get some of the dead weight out of the picture, right? Let's get it out of the way. Deadlifts. Now, deadlifts are a great exercise, but do they actually support the weighted pull-ups? First and foremost, when it comes to systemic fatigue, they've got really, really high systemic fatigue, like off the charts, not ideal. No particular retraction specificity. They do got some grip work though, depending on how you set them up, so that's all right. And uh, as for the bar specificity, you know, being dangling under a bar, right, in sort of like the different grip configurations you'd use for pull-ups and chin-ups, it doesn't really have that attribute. When it comes to execution, it takes some time to get right for people, and people tend to injure themselves on this lift, so that's not great. And for accessibility, you'd need access to a barbell, but most gyms have these, so that's not a big issue. As for progression, you can progressively overload really well with weight and reps, so in this regard, it does really well. Other benefits though, I mean, deadlifts are great for full body strength, and you've got that static contraction of the lat, which is why it's even on this list to begin with. But for the rankings, Unfortunately, guys, this is our first F tier of the day. Like, If you focus on improving the weighted pull-ups, then using deadlifts as a pulling accessory is simply a no-go. It's got too high systemic fatigue, and accumulating this from doing a lot of sets of deadlifts is just going to wreck your weighted pull-up performance. So otherwise, other than these things, it's a great full-body strength exercise, but as an accessory movement for making sure you really progress with those weighted pull-ups and really manage to rack up those numbers it goes into F tier, unfortunately. So, next exercise, rope climbs. As you guys can see here in the video, this is me performing some rope climbs. So let's look at the stats. First and foremost, you know, does it support weighted pull-ups? As for the systemic fatigue, I'd say this isn't a particularly big issue. 
doesn't really have any crazy sort of implications with systemic fatigue, at least not in my experience. As for retraction, obviously there's some retraction, but it could be better, it could be more specific, and you could be able to work on it more, more specifically. As for grip and tendon specificity, it's really great for grip work, really phenomenal to be honest, like gripping onto that rope, really, really good stuff. Bar specificity though, not much in that department, but that's all right. As for execution, it's relatively easy to execute, although of course, like if you want to do it properly and you want to have your legs straightened out somewhat, like it becomes a bit more difficult and you see that people need a decent bit of strength to be able to pull these off. And accessibility also, this isn't great. You need access to rope. And this is not very common in gyms or outside or whatever have you. And even if you have this yourself, it takes a bit of time to set up. So I wouldn't say it's really great in, in the accessibility department. When it comes to progression though, also not ideal. It's not very easy to overload. I mean, you can add time under tension, right? Do more sets, do more reps of these. And you can add a weight vest, but it's not the easiest thing to overload. As for other benefits though, I mean, Again, it's great for toughening up the grip, right? And you also got this chaos training element to it, where no rep truly is the same because of how you brace, based on how you grip, that type of thing, based on like if, if your core's involved, if your legs are raised, it's sort of, it's a bit of like a sort of chaotic element to it that can be really nice to have in a training program. And yeah, as I said, like it's got some core work, right? Especially if the legs are elevated, but it's also that thing where it's like, it's a vertical movement pattern with that regard, we would want to see more retraction. So that's not ideal. That's not really a benefit. It's just a, a feature it's got. So because of these things, it's tempting to put an A tier, but for me, it goes into B tier, right? Like they could have had greater specificity for weighted pull-ups and it's not that easy to find or to set up really. And it's a bit more tricky to progressively overload than other exercises. So for that reason, it's B tier, but I really would have liked to see it in A because it's such a cool exercise. I mean, it's, it's for the beasts out there, right? But um, it is what it is. So weighted hangs or one arm hangs or one arm weighted hangs. As you guys can see in the video right here, this is me performing a one arm hang with 75 kilos. Granted, not for a very long period of time, but it is what it is. So how is, it for, how is this for weighted pull-ups? Well, systemically, in terms of how you, how you experience fatigue with this, I wouldn't say this is a big problem at all. In my experience, it's actually quite all right. As for retraction, there's not much retraction going on if you're doing this in a sort of dead hang configuration, which is what you do if you want to maximally load it with weight. But for the grip and tendon work, this is phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Really, really good. Be because you have so much weight, you're really stimulating those tendons to grow. As for bar specificity as well, great bar specificity. This is the exact setup you'd use for weighted pull-ups. So execution, I mean, it's pretty easy execution. It's just dangling around from the bar. And accessibility, no problems here, you need access to a bar, but if you're already doing weighted pull-ups and this is an accessory movement you do afterwards, then you've already got access to that. So number three, progression. This is also easy to progressively overload, right? You can either just add time under tension or weights. And the other benefits, I mean, you can load weighted hangs more than weighted pull-ups. So this is great for tendons and for grip strength. And it's also great for getting used to hanging on the bar with a higher load. And this is like both physically, right? Like just to, to have those benefits that come along with a better grip, better tendon strength. But also there's an aspect of this where, for example, if you're used to doing, let's say, 30 kilo weighted pull-ups and then you want to test your max and you're testing out 40 kilos, when you go up to the bar, right, and you've like got all of the weights on around your waist, that type of thing, when you go up to the bar, 40 kilos is going to give you that, oh shit, this is more than I'm used to having around my waist. This feels heavy, right? Whereas if you're used to doing weighted hangs, you're not necessarily afraid of that type of weight well like you're very used to it in fact right obviously you're gonna have to do a pull up with the weight you're gonna test your one rep max with right so it is gonna be more challenging than just hanging but if you do a 50 kilo pull up and you're used to hanging with 70 80 90 kilos that type of thing having that weight around your waist when you go up for, up in weight for your weighted pull ups isn't going to be something new which which is advantageous i'd say so this means they will place the uh, weighted hangs and the one arm hangs in s tier some people might place these in A tier, but given how great they are for tendon and grip strength and that they got the specific weighted pull-up like bar set up, right, it's got great carryover for that. And then you get used to more weight in the dip belt, right, both physically and mentally. And it's easy to access, right? If you do weighted pull-ups, you have every single thing you need to do weighted or one-arm hangs. There's no even the need there's no even need for a barbell or anything like that. You've got every single thing guaranteed. And it's easy to progressively overload. Like for all of these reasons, for me it is an S tier exercise. So, inverted rows. Here's a footage, here's some footage of me doing some inverted rows. 
at body weight, pretty all right, chilling. But let's look at the criteria, right? For systemic fatigue, I'd say these are no problem at all. I don't really ever have a problem with being too tired due to this exercise. At least that's not what I've found. For retraction, great specificity here. You can really focus in on making sure your shoulder blades are properly retracted. Obviously, the press as well, but here the retraction is what we're really, really looking for. And for the grip and tendon specificity, it doesn't really have any specific uh, specific features to, to go over here. But bar specificity is pretty darn all right, because you can test out the different grip variations you'd use for weighted pull-ups, weighted chin-ups, that type of thing. So it's got good carryover in this regard. For the execution, I'd say it's easy execution, and you can change around your legs to make it more easy or more difficult. And accessibility-wise, I mean, you can perform these on P-bars, on parallels, on rings, on, on a barbell setup, on a, on a desk, right? So whether you're in the gym, whether you're at a calisthenics park, whether you're at home, most likely you've got access to this movement. So it's just, it does really well on, it, on the accessibility front. When it comes to progression, you can use a weight vest for more loading, but obviously it's got some limitations. You can't take a weight vest to like 50 kilos, or maybe you can, who knows, but like it's got some more limitations than using a dip belt and just loading it up. With, uh, with calibrated plates, right? But it should be a uh, plenty for most, so it's not really an issue, right? And you can use different leg configurations depending on how, how advanced or how, how advanced you are at this movement, and you can add reps over time, so I'd say it does pretty well in this regard overall. Other benefits though, like it's got this horizontal pulling pattern to balance out the vertical pulling, which this is, uh, this is something I'm a pretty big fan of, and it's got that good retraction work. So because of this, I'm actually going to put this in S tier. Some of you guys might disagree, but I'd say it's a great addition to weighted pull-up training because mainly of the retraction, right? Balancing out the vertical pulling with horizontal pulling, I think that's a nice feature. And then the other things, right? Easy execution, good accessibility, right? So good options for progressing overall and basically no fatigue with this movement. So it makes it S tier for me. All right, next up is barbell rows. Now for the stats here, what are we looking for? Well, systemic fatigue, right? Like the thing I'd say for barbell rows is that it's quite easy to overdo intensity with them. And that isn't ideal when we're looking at something for the weighted pull up, right? Our main objective is to improve the weighted pull up from week to week. And the accessories are more so for testing out different movement patterns, to work on different movement patterns, to work on other muscles and to sort of work on stabilizing muscles, these types of things. They're supposed to be a little sidekick for the weighted pull up, but they don't have to be something that we majorly, majorly progressively overload every single week so in this regard it's not ideal to have a movement that it's like the people have a tendency to overload too intensely because it takes focus away from our main pursuit when it comes to retraction specificity i'd say we're not really getting the what we're looking for right here it does all right obviously most of these pulling movements do do include some retraction work right but it's not really to the degree we'd want to right we're not able to control it as slowly as possible and as specifically as we'd like to so it doesn't really score that highly in this regard and similarly for grip and tendon specificity could be better could be better then for bar specificity as well this could be better because we're using the barbell as opposed to a thicker bar that we use for for pull-ups and we're not in the same configuration right then execution and accessibility wise i mean execution wise it's pretty easy to execute the movement but it can be a bit of a limiting factor with the, with your low back for some people, right? If you've if you've got a bit of a weaker low back, it might be a bit difficult to do these and do these safely. And you'd need access to a barbell, but most gyms that have plates that you'd use for your weighted pull-ups do have barbells, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. As for progression, these are really good to progressively overload, where you can have either add weight or reps over time. Other benefits, you have the horizontal pulling pattern, right? Which is really nice to balance out the vertical pulling you have with your weighted pull-ups. Overall, though, I'd say that the barbell rows fit into A tier because they're nice to like balance out the uh, vertical pulling with the with the horizontal pulling pattern, right? But they're not as good as the inverted rows for retraction. And even though most gyms have barbells and they're pretty easy to execute, the low back can limit progress a little bit. And so, even though they're not easy to progress, they can also be easy to overdo, right? And that means fatigue, and that means less focus. For the weighted pull-ups, right, it means less energy available for the weighted pull-ups. And because of this, it goes into A tier. So next up, lat pull-downs. Every gym bro's favorite exercise, isn't it? Well, that tends to be bench press, never mind. But for the lat pull-downs, they can be quite easy to overdo intensity-wise, similarly to the barbell row. As for retraction and grip, and grip and tendon specificity, there's not really much there. And similarly for the bar specificity, it's not really the similar the similar sort of setup we're looking for. You don't really get any any carryover from this. As for the execution, I'd say this is relatively easy to execute. 
but uh, accessibility wise you'd need a lat pull down machine and this is more rare than for example a barbell setup right progression wise it's easy to progress though you can either add weight or reps which is pretty much the easiest way of going about progressive overload so let's look at how we'd rank lat pull downs personally for me guys this might make a few of you a bit frustrated especially if you're on the gym bro side of things but for me it's d tear and that's for the simple reason that it's more vertical pulling yeah but this is already covered by the weighted pull-ups and you've got no particular retraction work right like you've got no particular retraction sort of specificity with this but then you might say well the weighted hangs and and what about the rope climbs but the rope climbs and the weighted hangs had tendon and grip work deluxe so right? just phenomenal phenomenal stimulus for for improving your grip and your tendon strength but this isn't the case for lat pull downs it doesn't have these things to compensate for the lack of retraction specificity right and in addition to this it's like it's easy to overdo intensity with these and you need a lat pull down machine which is less common than just a barbell setup however it is easy to progressively overload i'll give it that but all in all for me it's the detail and i just prefer doing for example barbell rows as an alternative to this now next up is the perfect pull up and this sort of covers a category also I'd just more broadly called bent arm scapular work the perfect pull up is pretty much the best thing you can do for your bent arm scapular work as you guys can see in the video this is me performing some perfect pull ups and what you aim to do here is just be maximally retracted to be fair at the top i'm cheating it a bit because as you see i'm stopping for a little bit and then bending in towards the bar because i just wanted to hit my uh, hit my chest on the bar and like sort of finish off the rep that way but a proper perfect pull up it's not too too big of a deal if you don't even hit the um hit the hit hit the bar here you just want to be maximally retracted and get up and this is pretty much top position because i can't go any further without caving in but with that said let's look at the stats so systemically with fatigue i have found no problems with these at all and as for retraction they're great 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 for working on that retraction pattern also grip 10 specificity not too much here but bar specificity wise it's got great bar specificity right you can use the exact same bar you're using for weighted pull-ups and it carries it over nicely given that you're hanging below it that type of thing next up execution i'd say for the perfect pull-up it's actually got pretty simple form cues most people can mirror these quite well the only thing here is to remove the ego out of the equation like actually actually do the form cues and not get any higher up because you want like like i did in the video for example right you want to go higher up and like if you're aware of it that's fine i guess but to get maximal returns on this you want to get as high as you can being fully retracted and have that be it don't try to go any further and then like lose the retraction the entire point of this is to max out that retraction that retraction specificity as for accessibility you need a pull-up bar or a hangboard or that type of thing but if you're already doing weighted pull-ups you've got access to this you know in the same session so no worries right it's, it's pretty much right there for the taking as for progression you can go weighted with these which is all right if, if they become too easy so to speak or you can add more reps or you can add more time under tension so these are pretty darn all right to progressively overload and as for the benefits i'd say they're really good for improving your pull-ups and skills such as the one arm pull-up where bent arm retraction is really important so what does this mean in terms of the ranking personally for me this is an easy s tier it supports weighted pull-ups really well you've got great retraction bar specificity no problems with fatigue relatively simple form cues that most people get pretty quickly and you only need a pull-up bar which you've already got access to right and you've got lots of room for progress and lots of ways to do this effectively so for me easy s tier great exercise now arching active hang is sort of the opposite to this or in a way not necessarily the opposite but perhaps an inverse or something where you have straight arm scapular work right so in the video this is me performing a quick arching active hang and as for the stats what we're looking at is similarly to the perfect pull-up you've got very little to no systemic fatigue that's not really an issue with these and retraction wise you've got great retraction but you've got great uh, bent arm retraction that's an important distinction as for the grip and tendon specificity nothing much going on here bar specificity though brilliant stuff it's exactly what we're looking for you're dangling under the bar similar similar fashion as as in a weighted pull-up and uh, and you're working on well, the same bar right execution wise this is where it starts to go a bit differently for for the archer arching active hangs is that people tend to miss form cues a bit with these and they seem to be a bit more difficult to get right accessibility wise you only need a pull up bar so that's no issue and when it comes to progressing here too it's a bit of a problem right like you can add reps or you can add time under tension perhaps you could add a weight weight vest but it's a bit tricky with this it's not as simple as 
as with the perfect pull-up. And especially when you factor in that people tend to miss form cues a bit, it tends to be something that people struggle to do as effectively and to get as much out of as, for example, something like the perfect pull-up. Other benefits, though, given that it's got that straight arm retraction, sorry, earlier I meant straight arm retraction because that's what it got, it's got. And the straight arm retraction is really great for something like the front lever, so that's worth considering. What does that mean for ranking? For me, it's B tier. You might want to place it in A tier, like I can see that, but given that it could be more specific to weight the pull-up training, right, get that bent arm retraction, and given it's not the easiest to progress, right, you cannot really add the weight so that well, it got to be done with like reps or time under tension, and since people tend to miss up, mess the form cues up a bit, at least more than the perfect pull-up, that's not ideal either, right? It would rank more highly for skill work. If you're, for example, chasing the front lever, I'd recommend this. But overall, if we're thinking of maximizing our weighted pull-ups, I'd put these in beta. Now, for the next category, this is going to be curls. And this is going to include bicep curls, hammer curls, and forearm curls, so like flexion and extension for the forearms. Now, there is a quick little sketch of me in the gym doing some proper good curls. Not as all the, the form's pretty atrocious with these, but it's just meant as a bit of a skit. Point is, though, for systemic fatigue, doing any types of curls is not an issue at all. Retraction-wise, I'd say you don't really have any great specificity. Similarly, for grip and tendon work, nothing great here, and bar specificity, nope. So it doesn't look too good. But execution-wise, it's easy to execute, and accessibility-wise, you only need access to some dumbbells. And since we're talking about smaller weights here, this can be DIY'd. So if you don't really have access to dumbbells, it's pretty easy to sort out with like some heavier books, or like you can pretty pretty easily find alternatives if that if that is the case. As for progressions, it's easy to progress, right? You can add reps or weight over time. No worries. For the other benefits, though, this is where it starts to get a bit interesting. Because of these curls, when you're looking into the different curl variations, they're great for targeting weak areas. So either getting in some bicep work, this is especially especially valuable if you do mainly weighted pull-ups, as opposed to weighted chin-ups. And you can also do forearm work, so for your forearm flexes and extensors. So what does this mean for the ranking? Well, this might confuse a few of you guys, but personally for me, I'd say it's in A tier. You might put it in B or even in C tier, and at first glance I might understand it. But for me, it's this that, although it could be more specific to weighted pull-up training, right? You could have horizontal or, or vertical pulling with retraction or any of these things. I'd say these are the things that are working for the curls, and they are as follows. It's easy to execute, it's easy to set up and find equipment, it's easy to progress, and you can target weak points, whether that is your biceps or your forearms. And because of this, honestly, I'm putting in an A tier. Let's go. And also, some, some nice features of it is that you have curls for the girls and you have biceps for the guys. Right? Like, at some point, it's, just, it's, it's nice to get into the gym and pump those arms a little bit and, and get those biceps growing, get those forearms nice, big and juicy. So for that reason alone, it almost makes sense to put them in A tier. Don't you agree? At least we'll do so right now. So, S plus tier. This is the best of the best. What are we putting in S tier, boys? Well, for S tier plus, S plus tier, I'd say that virtually all athletes, at least all athletes that want to do well in their weighted pull-up training, would do really well to implement this exercise. So what exercise is going into S plus tier? For me, it's got to be perfect pull-ups. No question about it. Incredibly good for retraction work. You've got that bar specificity. They're just phenomenal, phenomenal choice for your weighted pull-up accessory. Given that pulling is all about that retraction work, it really couldn't be any other choice, at least not for me. So, on the flip side of this though, what what was going to be downgraded to F minus tier? Since there's only really one exercise in F tier, it makes sense that it's going to be the deadlifts, right? They're associated with too much fatigue and you get too little specificity, so no proficient retraction or grip strength or any of these attributes. But I will say that lat pull downs are a close second, and I'm not really a fan of lat pull downs either. It is what it is. But also looking at sort of the stats and what you get out from it, I would much rather prefer doing a barbell row or even doing some curls or forearm work, or obviously something like the perfect pull up or weighted hangs or something like inverted rows instead. So with that, here is the full list for you guys. Feel free to admire this for a few seconds. Great piece of work right here. But one last thing I wanted to include in this video, which I feel like is quite significant, is that I wanted to include a quote. And I wanted to include specifically this one because I feel like it resonates well with the entire message I want to spread. And it goes, I want to be the best. It's not about ranking. It's about being consistent. And I feel like this is really important. 
if you're not a fan of the S plus tier exercise and perfect pull ups, and you're not really a fan of weighted hangs or inverted rows, whatever have you, what's important is that you're consistent, right? So if, for example, doing barbell rows or rope climbs or heck, lat pull downs, goddammit, if that gets you in the gym and it helps out so you overall get stronger and it's a nice, nice accessory for you to slowly and steadily improve your pulling ability, then go for it. The most important thing is to stay consistent and they improve over time. So if that means doing a variation that's a bit less effective, perhaps, then it is what it is, right? The biggest point is it's not about ranking at the end of the day. Although some exercises are more effective than others, it's about being consistent and it's about improving over time. So with that said, don't forget to join the free community. We've just had 170 members in there, so that's really exciting. A bunch of good guys and girls in the group, people wanting to level up, right? People hitting new PRs and experiencing a bunch of progress, sharing a bunch of motivational and exciting stories, right? And also people helping each other out, right? Like people asking questions in, in the community, people posting questions why they're struggling with this or that. They're not really sure why they're stuck. And a lot of people are helping each other out, answering questions, that type of thing. So feel free to join the community. Top link in the description down below. Also, check out this video right here. It's in the card somewhere as well on screen, perhaps for a full calisthenics strength blueprint. So for the actual weighted puller program, you could use as the main part to sort of supplement, to have these pulling accessories supplement into, right? Or check out this video right here if you want to check out the complete system I used to get to a roughly 2x body weight pull up. So with that said, let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree or do you disagree with the rankings? You know, comment below. Also comment below if you want to see any other exercises, any other types of rankings. And with that said, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.